Hi, I'm Larry Kegwin. Hello, everyone. I'm Chris Cassie, and we're the co-founders of the Green Box Arts Festival. Welcome to another episode of Happy Hour. Yeah, welcome back. This is episode two. Thanks for joining us. So before we introduce our next artist, our featured artist of the day, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to introduce the Pugs. This is Mr. B. And this is Ollie. Great. And tell us a little bit about Ollie. Well, I'll oh, tell wait, you. Oh, you know what? Before we do oh, that, yes? they're due for a union break. Should we let them go? <laughs> they're due for a union break? Okay, yeah. sure. Okay. All right, here you go, fellas. <clears throat> oh, boy. Mm. Well, anyway, what I want to do, to Larry, is tell you a little bit about Ollie. Okay. So Ollie is a fawn pug. Fawn pugs and black pugs come from the same litters. But the fawn pugs are distinguished because they have two layers of fur. As with all pugs or flat-nosed dogs, it's very important to be careful of them during the summer months to make sure they don't get overheated because they can overheat very quickly. But about Ollie, his story starts out sort of sad. I found him when I was taking a tour of the Humane Society in Colorado Springs. When I passed by the cage he was in, I almost didn't see him because he was so small compared to all the big dogs they had there. Ollie, as you can tell, is an older dog. How old? Well, um, the, I don't know exactly, but the veterinarian says around 14 or 15 years old. But he's deaf, and he only has one tooth. And that's why his tongue hangs out <laughs> of his mouth, because there's no teeth to hold. I his. think it's cute. Well, thank you. But there's no teeth to hold his little tongue in. And as Ollie's gotten older, he's also become a little blind. But one thing Ollie is, is he's full of love, and he's made the most wonderful addition to our family. We all love Ollie. And one of Ollie's favorite pastimes is sunbathing. <laughs> he loves sitting in the sun and on the deck and enjoying a little bit of bright sunshine, but not too long, because we don't want him to get overheated. So do you want to know a little bit more about Mr. B? Yes, tell us all about I'm Mr. Sure B. I'm sure you're curious, what is the B stand for? So it's, it's Balanchine, George Balanchine. And George Balanchine was a famous choreographer and I've always admired him. Being a choreographer myself, I find that he's an inspiration and I thought, what a great name for the pug, right? But let's be honest, Mr. B, the B can stand for anything. It could be for bossy or bratty or Mr. Big. And these days, he's as heavy as a bowling ball. It's true. I'm guilty of overfeeding him. Enough about the pugs. Let's hear a little bit about our featured artist today. I'd be happy to tell you. Um, so first of all, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce to our audience, Mr. Chad Mount. I first met Chad when I saw a photograph of him in a local magazine. At the time though, I thought that I need to get to know this fellow. And so I picked up the phone and gave him a jingle. We met and we immediately became fast friends. Really a terrific guy. Since that time, um, Chad's artistic practice has exploded. Also, Chad has been a committee member uh, for both Oklahoma Contemporaries Exhibition and also the, on the uh, education committees at Oklahoma Contemporary. Having an artist of Chad's stature and caliber has really been a great honor uh, for Oklahoma Contemporary. I should also mention that I know we're talking about Green Box, but Oklahoma yes. Contemporary is the new contemporary arts center that just launched this past March. It did. It was open for about a day um, <laughs> before, the, before it had to close because of the virus. Anyway, um, so I want to talk to you a little bit about, should we talk about um, the Artist in Residency program? Yes, Chad. Is that Chad right? Mount is the first artist in our Artist in Residency program. So the Green Box Artist in Residency program is a program to support uh, the evolution of an artist's career. We uh, encourage artists of all different stature, national, international, to come and to engage in this community, in this beautiful environment, and to create work and to share that with our community. So if someone wants to find out a little bit more about opportunities for artists or for the Artist in Residency program, what do you yeah, recommend? So you, like? could, you could go to the Green Box Arts Dot org website and there's a tab that says opportunities for artists and really this is something that, that Greenbox is about is offering opportunity for artists to create and to engage with community but also to allow community members to engage in the arts. So one thing uh, as an artist in residence that Chad wanted to do was to commandeer the artist billboard which is at the end of Lake Street and uh, Chad has put one of his pieces of artwork on the artist billboard and it's entitled Pondering 
ponderosas with purpose. <laughs> That's a lot of peas. And I love the artist billboard. It's become sort of a signature of the festival. Each year there's a different artist who uh, creates for, for the billboard. But enough about that. It's all very interesting, but I have a feeling it might be more interesting with a little beverage. What do you say we go inside and create a new drink? I think that sounds like a great idea. All right, let's, let's do, do it. it. Thank you. Well, welcome back, friends. For today, I thought I'd introduce us to something new. Summer drinks are a category all their own. Refreshments deemed appropriate to indulge between Memorial Day and Labor Day only. My favorite time of year. <laughs> Actually, sort of like wearing white clothing, especially jeans, shoes, and whatnot. The rule is firm. Only between Memorial Day and Labor Day. This is the holy grail of country club fashion. So, personally, I never feel quite comfortable wearing summer until we get closer to July. The same goes with drinking. The Aperol Spritz is perfect for today. It's a delicious drink mm. that is making a huge comeback. It's one of the most popular aperitifs in Italy, and it's as tasty as it is refreshing. Low in alcohol, aromatic, and with citrus, it's slightly bitter. Aperol pairs perfectly with Prosecco or with champagne. The Aperol Spritz is easy to make and it's delicious. It doesn't hurt that it also has this gorgeous summer coral hue. The recipe, three ounces of Prosecco or champagne, two ounces of Aperol, one ounce of soda water, and then you add all of the ingredients into a wine glass with ice and stir. Personally, I like to garnish it with a little slice of orange, with a little orange wheel um, to remind us that it is summertime. Larry, what about you? Well, you know, I'm a simple guy, so I'm keeping it simple again. I'm opting for Heineken. Have you heard about it? Mm. Yeah. So I, it's actually one of the most popular brands in, in the world, right? So it was originated by uh, Gerald Heineken, you know, the name Heineken. And his mother was very wealthy, and he had asked his mother, would you buy this brewery for me? And she did, lucky guy. So, you know, to prepare this drink, I, I like it on ice. You know, I like it real chilled. But some people, you might like at room temperature, you know, different strokes for different folks. Now, the hardest thing about preparing this drink, it's finding the opener. There it is, yeah. So I just put a little muscle in and uh, voila. And you can opt for a glass, but you know, I'm just gonna swig. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Very Keeping funny. Keeping it classy. <laughs> Keeping it classy. <laughs> okay. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk to our friend Chad Mount. And Chad is the insta one of the installation artists uh, for Greenbox Arts Festival in 2020. But he, was also, he also has the distinction of being the first artist in residence at Greenbox. So we've got a lot of fun things ahead. Yeah. And we'll see you soon. We're going to step outside. Okay. See you then. Chad was born in 1975 in Oklahoma. He attended the University of Oregon, where he studied character animation. He's illustrated for Spin Magazine and worked on game development for PlayStation. He's participated in the Artelais Creative Residency in Finland, and his artwork is in the collections of the Toy 2R HQ in Hong Kong, the Oklahoma History Center, and the Kirkpatrick Bank. Chad was the first artisan residence for the Green Box Arts Festival. His residency took place in February and March of 2020. As a part of that residency, Chad was able to commandeer the artist billboard in Green Mountain Falls. And here we see a photograph of his work, Pondering Ponderosas with Purpose. According to Chad, we're experiencing multiple paradigm shifts across arts and sciences with technology as the accelerator. His work involves exploring these crossroads. Chad wants the audience to actively reconnect with nature using art and modern mechanics as the medium. As a part of Chad's Artist in Residence program, he taught the sixth grade students from the Mountain Academy of Arts and Sciences at the Ute Pass Elementary School. Here you can see Chad working with the children and how engaged they are. Here are a few examples of Chad's previous artwork. This piece entitled, It's Just You and Me, was shown at the 2015 Busan South Korea Contemporary Art Fair. This body of work was inspired by a smaller piece of artwork that Chad had given to a friend. That friend was involved in a shipwreck off the coast of South Korea, and the artwork was lost at sea. Chad imagined what that artwork was doing deep in the ocean. 
This one is called Noisemaker Speaker. A retro speaker was wrapped in 32 individual video clips from Scandinavian lights. Even the four tiny screws that held each speaker together had its own tiny movie playing on it. The speaker was bought at a thrift store and painted white with a dusting of silver spray. According to Chad, what fascinates him is the almost symbiotic relationship between the celestial and the aquatic. He aims to capture the parallels in both of these realms. Chad has been influenced by Olafur Eliasson and Christo and Jean-Claude. Chad says that when he saw Eliasson's work, that it changed the way he viewed light. He also has an affinity to be playful and experimental. He's also been inspired by the scale of Christo and Jean-Claude's work. Cheers. To Chad. To Chad. Mm. Thanks for joining us, Chad. That's delicious. Chad, it is really great to speak with you today and to introduce you to our viewing audience. Please describe yourself and the history of your background. We'd be interested to know. Thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here, honored, really. Uh, I was born in Tulsa, Oklahoma, in a pink hospital, and uh, was raised, or I like to say I grew up in Oregon, but I was raised in Oklahoma. All my life, I've been attracted to the arts, creating things on some level or another. And uh, in fourth grade, I won this award. And it was for a piece of sculpture that uh, gave me a $10 savings account. And that put in my brain, wow, people value this thing called art. From there, my sister was another influence in my life. She was a graphic designer. That headed me in that direction once I got out of high school. Within a, a year or two, uh, headed out west to study animation, character animation at the University of Oregon. Before I could even graduate, I was scooped up uh, by a game company in, in Eugene. So the company just kind of popped, it disappeared overnight. And actually it was at that point, I'm kind of, uh, I kind of went in reverse in many ways uh, because I was very much digital before I ever picked up a paintbrush. Anything can be a brush. It's all a matter of perspective. Wow, I didn't realize you did all that. That's fantastic, great. So I'm curious specifically about the work you're creating here in Green Mountain Falls that'll be at the billboard at the end of Lake Street in downtown Green Mountain Falls. Can you talk to us a little bit about the process and how you went about building that work? Pondering Ponderosas with purpose. Yeah, that was fun. Um, when I first arrived at the residency, I was very excited to take my equipment out into the woods and test out some of these uh, theories. So started by documenting snowstorms and that footage uh, I would sit with and play with while I couldn't go anywhere. Um, and I didn't know that that was going to be the billboard. <laughs> Honestly, there were several things that I thought might make their way into being the billboard. Uh, but when I got back from uh, Green Mountain Falls and I was going through the edits and looking at the footage, I looked at that piece and uh, I just knew what I wanted to do. That billboard ended up actually being uh, extracted from a video that I created from that balcony, looking down at where the billboard's sitting. So if you look at the billboard again, the little back, the mountains in the background are actually the same mountain that's right behind the billboard itself. Great, thanks for sharing about that work. I know our audience here will love to see that. So I'm curious, how has projection, the technology of projection changed over the years? Larry, so I have to tell you, the 12 years that I've been working with projection mapping, um, really in the last two years, there's been a paradigm shift. So how has it changed? Um, the tools, a production that would have cost, you know, $50,000 a few years ago can be done for a fraction of that with the tools that are available now. You don't have to have the expertise and the knowledge and study uh, years of lighting like I have necessarily to 
to work with projection, to, to do a, a project using projection mapping. But I also, Larry, I think it's going to really become more integrated into our daily lives outside of art, um, alongside with augmented reality. Because the way I look at projection and projection art is more projected, it's more projected AR because you're essentially augmenting a space with light, but in three dimensions. That's fascinating. I'm glad you understand it. I don't, I don't understand a thing, but it looks great. And sounds good. Chad, my gosh, you served on the Education Committee and the Exhibits Committee at Oklahoma Contemporary, and I'm very, very thankful. You were there for the inaugural exhibition, Bright Golden Haze, which is currently on exhibition. I'm curious to know, um, in Bright Golden Haze, is there an artist that you identify with? Yes, Chris. The one that I identify with the most is Oliver Elison. Tell us a little bit about your time in Green Mountain Falls. Did you enjoy your residency here? I know it was cold, it was in February, but you got time to interact with the kids at the Ute Pass Elementary School. Tell us about your time in Green Mountain Falls. Well, Chris, first off, it was a huge honor to be the first artist in residence at Green Mountain Falls, and I loved it. Um, I chose that winter, the February month, because I hate the cold. <laughs> I mean, I'm a pretty thin guy. I don't, uh, I wanted to be outside of my comfort zone to push myself uh, I felt I would, it would push me and, and what I was trying to do creatively a little um, harder, and uh, it did. Chad, you are a ladies' man. What about, what's it called? The Blue Moose. The Blue Moose. Did you make it down to the Blue Moose and check out the ladies, local talent, yeah. play a game of pool? We want stories. We want stories. Please share for our viewing audience. Yeah. This is what they're paying for, Chad. Yes. Ah, uh, Chris, Chris. Yes, of course. Um, ladies, it was February, Chris. There weren't many ladies in Green Mountain Falls, even at the Blue Moose. And on that note, what happens at the Blue Moose stays at the Blue Moose. You should know that of all people. <laughs> Chad, someone whispered in my ear that you were a deadhead. So, you know, I'm wondering, being a great fan of the Grateful Dead, has that influenced your work at all? Yes. I am a deadhead. I got into it very early, and so it most definitely influenced what I was doing, uh, including a billboard, oddly enough. The only other billboard that I've ever created ended up going in off a highway in Tulsa for when I was a junior in high school for like six months, and uh, it was to help save the rainforest, which I would not have done had I not been introduced to the Rainforest Act Action Network through touring with the Grateful Dead. Thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us today and to talk with our viewers. You're such a pleasure to work with and it's an honor to be your friend. If it's okay with you, I'd like to share your contact information in the credit section of this episode with our viewers. So if anyone wants to reach out to you, they can feel free to do so. Thank you so much for this interview. I have to split now. Also, I'd like to thank everyone for participating today and remind them that next week we'll be tuning in with Jason Hackenworth, our featured artist. Very, very exciting. And remember, always support your local artists. And be kind to animals. Especially the pugs. Thanks, everybody. Until next time. Happy hour with Chris and Larry. Scene eight, take one. Go grab a drink. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Come on, guys. Woo, woo, woo. All right. With chilled Prosecco. The Aperol splits. <laughs> splits? I love the Aperol splits. <laughs> the Aperol spritz is easy to make, and it looks delicious. Delicious, right? <laughs> looks delicious, right? It looks delicious and delicious. Chad, Chad, we can't hear you. There seems to be some uh, technical issue. Technical issue. Oh my God. <laughs> Carlos, what's a great way of saying turn down the sound? 
Too many amps? You got too many uh, amps? Go. Turn down the game. Game? Turn down game. your game, the sound. G-A-I-N, game. Okay, yeah. G-A what? G-A-I-N, game. Like a gain in your stock portfolio. Oh, turn down your game, yes. okay. Perfect. <laughs> game. game.